two and a half million passengers enjoyed supersonic flight on Concorde. Slicing through the stratosphere, 11 miles above the Earth's surface and at over twice the speed of sound. Witnessing the curvature of the Earth below and the deep blue of space above. Rarely does a machine garner such affection, but during her 27 year service, Concorde secured a place in people's hearts. A design marvel, a message from tomorrow. Nothing in the world of aviation has rivaled her since. The Bremont supersonic chronometer marks the 50th birthday of this very sublime flying machine, an icon of British engineering. By 1962, Great Britain and France signed a treaty to develop a supersonic airliner. The result was Concorde. Concorde first flew in 1969. Her elegant design was worlds apart from the subsonic airliner fleet. Her delta wing with its swept back curve was sculpted from one solid piece of aluminium. Over 5,000 hours of wind tunnel testing ensured the wing could generate lift at both low and supersonic speeds. Mach 2.2 was to be the safe speed her aluminium structure could withstand. At these speeds, her skin temperature would already reach over 90 degrees Celsius and her airframe would stretch up to 11 inches. In 1962, when the Concorde was first conceived, the world had not seen a supersonic airliner. The only aircraft capable of Mark 2.2 were jet fighters, one-seater, two-seaters. They had very limited range, and they certainly couldn't take 100 people in comfort across the Atlantic. It really was an engineering marvel. Nobody had seen anything like this before, but even more remarkably, nobody has seen anything like this since. Her 24-foot-long nose cone was distinctive, Shaped like a bullet, it was designed to droop for landings and takeoff, enabling the pilots to see the runway. At high speeds, the nose was raised and a reinforced tinted visor slid up to protect the cockpit at supersonic speeds. Concorde's design was ahead of its time. She was drawn up on blueprints and early wing designs were tested using paper aeroplanes. Her prototype airframes underwent more testing than any subsonic airliner ever had. When Concorde was built, no engine was capable of accepting airflow at supersonic speeds. One of the challenges was to produce an engine that would give us enough power uh, to take off and fly supersonically. They chose the Olympus engine that had been uh, developed for other aircraft, but we vastly developed it for Concorde. It produced a lot more power. The roar of Concorde's engines became a familiar sound at London's Heathrow Airport. On the takeoff roll, the powerful thrust of her four Rolls-Royce Olympus turbojets pushed passengers back into their seats. Each engine supplied 38,000 pounds of thrust with afterburner, a feature usually found on military jets. For a pilot who loves flying airplanes, it was the ultimate, the, the, the real satisfaction right down to the very bones of a pilot to fly this wonderful airplane. Although it's so obviously beautiful, I think people really understand that it was a sophisticated piece of engineering. Everything was precision made. Um, so much of it was international, but so much of it was British. And everybody feels a sense of pride that we actually did this. You know, the rest of the world couldn't, but it was done by those that brought Concorde to life. Concorde's aerodynamic design gave her an instantly recognizable silhouette. It is this iconic silhouette which has been incorporated into the beautiful mechanical movement of the Bremont supersonic. To mark the 50th anniversary of the first flight of Concorde, Bremont's creating the Bremont supersonic, which is a limited edition watch, incorporating parts of Golf Alpha Bravo the Concorde still owned by British Airways, which resides at Heathrow. This is our first manual wind movement that Bremont has ever produced. It's an eight-day parareserve, which incorporates a parareserve indicator within the dial. So it's a pleasure to be working with British Airways on this project as they celebrate their centenary and, importantly, 50 years of Concorde. Concorde's maximum operating ceiling was 60,000 feet. Any military pilot at similar altitudes would be wearing a spacesuit and breathing oxygen. Concorde passengers, however, were wearing shirt sleeves and drinking champagne. 
when she was finally withdrawn from service in 2003, hundreds of thousands turned out to wish her a fond farewell. While she undoubtedly saved her passengers time, there were many who wished the flight lasted longer. <laughs>